guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm on fire, I'm on fire, yeah. Yes, whatever he said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fire, I'm on fire, yeah. I wish I knew. I speak Gaunt, but the tree Well, she can speak Dree, to be honest. But yeah, welcome back to my channel, guys. Um, we're back today with a very interesting subject. I think it's more interesting than the last one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Our subject is today. Yeah, they topic Papa Aba. Serious Papa Aba. <laughs> <Serious. laughs> <laughs> Do you want to introduce the topic? Okay, um, the topic is. You got a good topic yes, to today. Yes, our topic today is growing up hood. Literally, what we mean is like growing up hood. How the roads affected you? Right. How going to prison, and how it affected those on the outside, meaning our families and friends. Yeah, we feel like this is something that's personal to us, something that a lot of people can relate to as well. Definitely. So I think it will just be really interesting for us to show our insight into the subject, and it's nice. Nice to discuss these things. Definitely. So yeah, first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break it down a little bit so we hit certain points. So the first su subject we're gonna discuss is what it was like for you being in jail. And you can tell them how long you were in jail, why you were in jail, it's up to you if you want to tell them. If you don't, you don't have to. Um, well, I was in jail for over a decade, about, let's say about, yeah, over, just over 10 years. Um, reasons I'd keep disclosed <laughs> send me a um, DM and I'll tell you the reasons <laughs> <laughs> do you get me but like I was released like what 2014 January and it was scary for me if I'm talking personally and honestly I was a bit scared to like come into this world like when I went in jail I wasn't I wasn't paying rent, I wasn't paying my own bills, I was just doing role, didn't it? Making peace for trainers, like girls and driving and things like that, but I didn't have the moral responsibility to think about family and things like that. So when I went in jail and I came out, it was a bit scary because I had to take on all those responsibilities. I had a, girl, a, a female child daughter, so I had to be a role model for her. I had to pay rent, live on my own and mm. all of those things and it was scary because I hadn't experienced it but I came out to a good family network. You know, it's really interesting because I never thought about it like that. Mm. I, I, I think about coming out and yeah, you're back but I, think, I don't think about the responsibilities mm. because especially being in there for as long as you were, it's true, you didn't have to pay rent, you didn't have to you do all do of those nothing. things. You don't have to pay nothing. And Pound, all of a sudden you pay, you're outside. You pay TVs about a pound. A pound. Yeah, and you get money sent in, you can work in there. So really and truly, you don't pay no bills, and the only thing that you're detached from when you're in prison is, is family and it and, your and stuff like that. But you find friends, you become closer, and so forth. So when you come out, unless you've got a good family network or a good support system, those things are difficult. Luckily, I had a good support system, so I was able to find work and so forth and put myself. But at the same time, I had a set mind frame of what I was going to achieve, so nobody could put me back. So I just took everything head on. Mm. So. Yeah, but that's just that aspect of things. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And there's so many aspects of it you have Tom to think is. about. Relationships. Yeah, um, relationships. I had never been in a proper relationship. So, so how old were you when you went in? I mean, that would disclose your age now. Um, I don't mind. I was young how old were you when you went in? I first went in when I was about 18. Okay, so you're still pretty young. Yeah, came out when I, when I was 20. I went back in when I was 20 and came out 214. So that was four years. I mean, I heard your birthday yesterday. Mm -hmm. It was his birthday yesterday. Happy birthday! Done now. Um, how old were you? Thirty-two. Um, I'm thirty-three. Yesterday. You okay? The old. What do you mean old? I met you last at thirty-two. I'm in my prime. I'm thirty-three. I'm in my prime. This is where. This is where I am. I am. I am solid. I'm, I'm like, in my prime. I'm in my I'm prime. I'm in my prime. You I'm, you're I'm pushing saying. the prime. No, no, <laughs> think about it. Think about it. You're twenty-two, but you've got a lot of Spring chicken. You've got a lot of experiences together do you get me you've got a lot of emotional experiences yes, to go through and things like that for you to understand how you can maneuver and weave through the world mm. i'm at an age where i've been through all of that so now if i don't make the right decision i can mess up the rest of my life trust me do you get what i'm saying whereas you can mess up and still have can recover mm. do you get what i'm saying i ain't got that opportunity do you know what I mean? So, that's some serious stuff in there. Yeah, so that's, you have to look wow. at it from different dynamics. Like that, do you get what I'm serious. saying? So, yeah. Um, so, how did it affect you, like, having a brother in prison? <laughs> to be honest, yeah, I feel like 
don't remember so much. Because you was young. I don't remember so much because I was young and I was hidden away from everything. Mm -hmm. It's like no one tells me nothing. No one really. Obviously, I know where my brothers are, but nobody really tells me anything. But I feel like. It's difficult, obviously. It's hard because you have brothers. I have to not get emotional in this video, you know, because mm -hmm. I'll beat my face. Like, nobody got time for that. Nobody got time. Get emotional. It's real talk. <laughs> it's real convos. It's I real can't convo. all the time. Like, no, I can't about everything. No, I can't. Much. Much. Okay, listen, don't tell nobody that. <laughs> I can't watch soppy movies. Yeah, because if it's a real life, like someone's lost a son or something, like, I would say, yeah, I'm going to toilet quickly. Like, I'm done. Like, yeah, it's long. I can watch a movie and then just send someone a mad text. Yeah, what that means you've got a real heart. Very real. Too emotional. Too emotional. But yeah, no, yeah. it was definitely difficult having brothers that weren't here for some of the time. Mm -hmm. Like I said, like you said, I was very young at the time, so there isn't that much that I remember, but I remember writing letters and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and just come and see so you inside. Where was my letter? Like, I never got it. Where were you? 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 Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah. while I was in prison, you was very, very young. The times when it was really relevant, where you could call me and say, mm. oh, bro, can I need trainers or da 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 da, I wasn't around. You yeah. only had Lee. Do you get what I'm saying? So you only experienced his side of being a brother. Do you get me? And he's the bad cop. <laughs> yeah, I'm the undercover cop. Yeah. Do you get me? But I'm different to him. Do you get what I'm saying? Because mm. I see life differently. But so. you know what? To be honest, with me, even though I was young, I never liked coming to the prison. Mm -hmm. I never liked it at all because made me feel emotional even now it's not it just a makes place, me emotional it's not a place you really want I feel to like I just want to grab you lot and just take you lot back with that's me. what everyone said it's just to be able to, to come and leave them in that place is mad it's mad employability Ooh. Oui. Ooh. so <laughs> I came out Traveling. I, can, I remember I came out I went to River Island I tried to get a job they said I was one of the best recruits because I'm not one of them guys who's not trying to gain knowledge I think knowledge is power so I read a lot, I investigate, I research, I don't take everything, I read literally. Um, so yeah, so they said I was one of the best candidates. So I ended up going for the main interview, ready to sign the contract, and then I got pulled out Yeah, by one of the, the, the managers saying that oh, a mistake had been made and that um, I didn't get chosen because of my criminal record. So when I said that, I said, you know what? This is just long. I was down hard to start my own business and then start my, my own MP. company. So that's why I started doing my photography and my videography and things like that. But like it's difficult because if you don't have the guidance or people around you to kind of give you those nudges and kind of put things that you weren't accustomed to in front of you and tell you how to maneuver with it, it's going to be difficult. Because you have to remember half of us that do road, yeah, we do road for a reason because we either failed in school or it's the only thing we know. Do you get what I'm saying? Or we've got brains and we just feel like that's the, it's the, that, quickest, it's way. the quickest way to it's make money. Do you get what I'm saying? Being your own boss, doing your own thing. Yeah, so when you do road and you're trying to come out of road, it's about transferring your skills, isn't it? But learning. Because there are skills. And you know what? I'm glad you said that because there are skills there. What? There are skills there. Like, I'm an entrepreneur. You like, are. If I you know listen a lot of people me. might think this is funny. It's not or funny. It's if bad you are, this is serious. Let me, let's let's break down. Serious. Let's break down the technical side. If you are a road man and you do road, yeah, you are a businessman and you are an entrepreneur, yeah, you know how to make money fold. You just need to change the matrix you're in. Because, for example, let's say a, a, a drug dealer, he'll go and buy an ounce of crack cocaine. He might get it for a hundred pound. Let's say hypothetically. He'll break down that £100 and make a profit of, let's say, £200. So he doubles his profit. It's the same kind of mathematics if you open a restaurant. Yeah? You get your food, you buy your products, you break it down and you cook it. Yeah? You price your dishes, yeah? And you triple your, pro you triple your money. So it's just about transferring your skills and knowing how to market them and putting them into different industries that will be relevant to those skills. And I think that's what I learned how to do. Do you get what I'm saying? But I had... I wanted to know how to do that. Do you get what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know themselves. A lot of men them on the road don't know what they're trying to achieve. 
Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A lot of them are just there for the sake of just being on road yeah. and making money. So but nobody knows true. what they want to do with their money, what yeah. enterprises they want to build. If they're going to yard to build a house, if they're trying to, you know, buy a house for mommy or so forth. What do you get what I'm saying? What do? is it that you're trying to do? Because the it's moment true. you have a purpose, yeah, yeah the exactly. way you grind will change. Do you know what? I remember speaking to Carl. Me and Carl had an in-depth conversation and he was just like, for him, it was the purpose. Mm -hmm. It was the purpose of wanting to be more and exactly. do more and be better and it wasn't that what you're doing doesn't bring you money doesn't mm -hmm. bring you enough money it's just that the purpose isn't enough it doesn't fulfill you and i feel like when you find your purpose in what you want to do for instance photography or whatever you get a kick out of seeing your photos the final image you have a purpose you have and a you're purpose there to, you know what you're to trying fulfill to it. it's like if you have somebody that um motivates you yeah I think you always fail because motivation can stop. That person might be busy. Do you get what I'm saying? They might come a point in their life where they need motivating. Do you get what I'm saying? What we need is drives. We need something that's driving us, something that's fueling us, something that's giving us the fire to achieve something. Because when you have a drive, you're going to wake up in the morning with that same drive. I need to do this, I can't waste time, I've got to do this and finish this because I've got to get here before I can get there and climb the ladder. When you have a motivation, it's like you wake up, you wait for your bedroom to come check you and be like, yeah fam, can we go here and check my man and da da da, yeah, all right, cool, Bun all of that. You have to have your own mentality and know exactly what you want to achieve. Because once you know what you want to achieve, you know how to go through the maze to achieve it. So I think everybody just needs to kind of get an angle on what you want to attain in life and what you're trying you to achieve and where you want to be and what your end goal is because yeah. once you know where you want to be you're going to know how to get there i feel like when i was younger I always used to, it's, it's just something i hated i hated seeing road men and doing their thing i hated seeing saggy trousers i hated i just hated that life and i hated everyone who was doing it because i felt like just what my brothers were doing and my brothers weren't there so i hate after i had gotten older i, I just i started to see life from a different angle and I feel like I feel I say I feel like all the time but I don't want to get too deep but I want to just touch on something very mm -hmm. quickly because we are enslaved mm -hmm. that is a fact don't ever think I saw a post on Facebook the mm -hmm. other day don't ever think that you're a free man in this world, especially in a Western country. Yeah, don't nobody come for me, you know, looking for me like. Listen, I'm this if you don't want to have that deep person, conversations, we can have them deep we can, conversations. We can, we can come back with part yeah, two. You come back but with part two, but let's just keep it. In simple. terms of me trying to understand the roadman mentality and mm -hmm. stuff like that, I started to realize that again. A lot. Why do they do it? A lot of people feel like maybe they ain't got anything better that they can do. They aren't seeing any role models and they don't know what they want to do. And it's all part of the way that society um, works in terms How, against the reason, young the reason, black people. The reason a lot of black people are just doing what they're doing is because at the end of the day, yeah, I understand that certain people will see what a drug dealer does on the road is wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you have to understand, like, since I've come out, I've started working with kids, trying to get them back into education and employment. And the opportunities that the government and people at, within power are trying to give our kids are this foolishness. Do you get what I'm saying? Because a kid that graduates from Cambridge will get an opportunity to mm -hmm. probably work at a top office in, in a big bank. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Or oil company or a pharmaceutical company mm -hmm. or something like that. The black kids, the opportunities that they get or those from urban backgrounds, the opportunities, the security guard or, 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 or River Island or something like that. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They're not being motivated to achieve, achieve more. Not only that, the media representation of black people it's, is not yeah. good. It doesn't Do you get help. what I'm saying? It's they like you, you just hit walls yeah, everywhere so you they go. Don't, they don't promote no black excellence. They don't promote black power. They don't promote black achievements. They don't promote things that black people have done. Do you get what I'm saying? So the kids that watch TV, all they're seeing is white, white. And when they do see black, all they're seeing is negative, fuck, negative, fuck, negative. Oh, so they feet, so oh, internally oh, and subconsciously, they're going to feel like they can't achieve. I have a passion to want to help and to want to change as many people as I can. And if this video can touch one person, that would honestly make me really, really happy. Mm -hmm. Whoever it can touch. But I think it's important to know that you can be and do whatever you want to be. And nobody can tell you that you can't. Nobody can tell you that you don't have the skills. And as young black individuals, you have to understand that we're born great. 
You know that. Do you know what, yeah? I agree with what she's saying, but I'm going to break it down. You can't be whoever you want to be. I yeah. can. And always be a good person it? and have a clean heart. From when you go Amen. that way and you have a clean heart, everything you do will succeed. Amen. Because everything you're going to do is clean. Amen. You get me? Amen. You're trying to be clean at it. You see it? Amen. Go with my clean eating. Clean. <laughs> everything clean. Everything clean. All right, listen, fresh. we're even going to have one about food soon. Um, showing oh. you lot what's going on about food, <laughs> healthy eating, and all of that. So, yeah. Yeah, then I'm going to um, like input my boyfriend's meal plan so you lot can go on his page and buy all his meal plans as well. Boyfriend, where? What? Have you introduced me to any boyfriend? Buy one well, meal we, plan. We know we got him there. You'll be buying his head. Buy his meal plan. His guys. head. Because you're going to see how fleek I'm going to be in a couple head. months. Yeah, you, I don't know why you've allowed this. Ah. Yeah, I've had a thing. He's turn been, it off. Turn it off. He's been using it's a finished. cushion because he's so short. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to expose him. I am so cute. Listen, I'm taller than her, you know. So, so why that, is it that when you say, oh, he said that my bum's big. It's not that deep. I'll be a ninja. Yeah, what was it like being inside jail? What was it like being in prison? I've heard some stories. Oh, yeah, so, so yeah, what was, was it like? like? Going in Ghana? No. <laughs> It's gone to jail! Oh, sorry, my mind just went. It felt <laughs> like jail. <laughs> <laughs> when you got shit. Are you listening? That's another one. I mean, one. you could do yeah, no, that's, that's another, another day, one. Day, yeah. That's another day. <laughs> for all the people that got shit to go. <laughs> Guys, that's the intro that's the for the next, next one. Yeah. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Getting shit to Getting Ghana. Shit to Ghana. All your experiences. All I know, Holly, you lot got your passport snatched away from Trust you once you got there, boy. Naughty boys. But yeah, what but was yeah. it like being in jail? What was it actually like being inside prison? Well, your first time going in, everything. Okay, the first time I went in, I heard all those stories about soap on the floor. <laughs> and, yeah, you know what I'm <clears throat> and watching the films and that. And having my experiences from being in Ghana and going to visit um, family in prison, mm. I thought jail was going what, to be a nightmare. Family Uncle Sammy, in Uncle Sammy, yeah. What was that like? Oh, that was madness. I talked about that. Boom. Damn. But yeah, um, so when I went jail, I thought like it was going to be peak. Like as soon as I get out, I'm going to have to scrap anybody that tries it. I'm going to have to fuck up anyone, like keep it moving. <clears throat> I went to jail, it was pretty. You enjoyed yourself. I was like, this can't be prison. I was like, he was my Cody at the same time. But it wasn't anything I expected. So I think I went boarding school in Ghana, and to me, boarding school was harder than prison. The only thing is that as as a kid, I was a, a bit like missing my family and stuff like that, finding it emotionally difficult. But you kind of use the bravado to block all of that out, innit? Do you get what I'm saying? You have so much anger, so when people try shit or someone chat shit, it's straight knockout. It's, but as an adult now, I understand how I was taking that frustration out on other things. You get me? But it's not easy in jail, but it's easy depending on who you are. The same way you have on roads, you have levels of hierarchies, the same way in prison. You've got the top drug dealers, you've got the low drug dealers, you've got the waste man, and you've got the, the man then. Do you get what I'm saying? You've got screws that are all right. You've got screws that ain't all right. Loose ones. You get, yeah, so like if you're a certain way and you're shot in the road and you're that way and you're doing that in jail, you're going to live nice. Do you get me? You're still going to have the same problems you have on road, like the feds and all of that, which is the screws and that. Or if you're just a normal person, you have a normal life in jail. You follow the rules, you adhere to what they tell you to adhere to and you just carry on with the procedure. Mm. Like We just don't follow rules, innit? Because we're not accustomed to the rules that they want to lay to us in prison. So we kind of make, make our own. own around what they have mm. to get me in order to make our lives comfortable and habitable for us do you get mm. what i'm saying because this raping us man prisons are prisons a new modern day slavery mm -hmm. do you get what they've got i mean well, what, what, why were they made i mean how many black people do, do you think have been falsely in prison back in the day and even now for oh, yeah. crimes that they didn't commit i mean the number would be ridiculous absolutely ridiculous so to find black people in prison now and to say that it's a, it's a modern modern day slavery, it's, it's no surprise. It really yeah, isn't. Man. But prison's hard, it depends, because I've seen people in prison take it deeply and struggle mm. with it, do you get me? Because you don't know each and every person's family situation. But who do you feel, what kind of people do you feel struggle the most? Is there a specific kind of person that I you think, say struggle? I think, I think, but do you know what? I've had different experiences. I was in there for over 10 years, isn't it? So, I've seen different struggles, mm. get me? I've seen people hang themselves, you get what mm. I'm saying? I've seen people get stabbed up, I've seen all of those dynamics and at the same time I've seen a foreign national come, who's got nicked because he's come from a different country, had no money, nothing and he's hanged himself, do you get what I'm saying? 
And then I've seen another man who's a road man or was holding the strap for somebody and then he's come out and then he feels like you can't really handle it. Do you get what it breaks certain mentally it breaks certain people down and so but so other people are stronger. Mm. Me, I went to boarding school in Ghana. Ghana. Mm. Yeah, me, I went to school in Ghana, so I went to boarding school too. Mm-hmm. So I guess it kind of gave me the experience, experience of Prepared being away you. from family and staying away from family for a long like period. Used to it. Yeah, so when I got to jail, I was like, bro, this is just like boarding school, but like a better version because I get and TV older. and I get it, yeah, and all of that. Do you get me? So I dealt with it totally different. Mm. Yeah, but I decided to use that opportunity to like enhance my brain and mm. so I read a lot. I researched a lot, I was on my phone a lot, like, yeah. To Muslim? To, to Islam, because I had time to study and research things, so, yeah, so. I think everyone's experience as a prison is totally different. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? Because I've seen people that have had a very hard time in prison. If you could go back and change anything, would you, and mm, what would it be? Nope. <laughs> I wouldn't change anything. If I change anything, that means I'm not happy with my life now. No, but you, I don't know you what, might have wanted to do things differently. Yeah, but to say that, I'm I don't sure know what I don't things. I don't know what the effects. I'm sure you wouldn't have got nicked. Do you know what? But I don't know the effects of those things at that time because if I didn't get nicked, I wouldn't have reflected on getting nicked. So I would have probably gone deeper into crime. Me going deeper into crime could have probably led me on a murder charge or something deeper. Or Do you get what I'm saying? Murdered. All right, so that's what I'm saying. I would never change anything because I'm still alive and I've got my family and, and I'm happy. Blessings. Exactly. So if I change anything, blessings. that might all change too. So no, I wouldn't change anything. I'm, I what if if anything, I wish I had the knowledge I had now Back when then. I was about eighteen. The experiences, the knowledge and everything. If I had that when I was 18, I feel like I would have made better decisions than I did. Mm. But yeah. That's really good. So yeah, I think That's like, deep so everybody in prison's experiences is different. I guess it depends on your mental state and um, your family, if you've got family supporting you and so forth. I remember and when also you were coming out there, I was so gassed. Was you? I was so gassed. I was so gassed. I was like, I don't know why I was so excited, but I was just like, finally. finally. Like, I think it's been there long enough and you'll be nice whilst the chill. Like, I remember thinking, oh my God, then we could do this and that. Because you and Lee are different, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Like, obviously, everyone's cool. I love yeah. everyone, but Lee's different. He's not interested. I don't think I could get him to do this. Really? I'm going to really try, but I don't think I could. He'll just probably sit there and be like, oh, what's this? You know what, man? Man's bored now. Man, <laughs> man, man you're on the long thing, and then just be gone. Yeah, like, and then pop back in this. five minutes. Oh, what? You're not still doing this? Let me get involved. Mm-hmm. Like, he'll want to be involved, but then he won't. So I was excited to get to do cool things with you because, like, you're down. You're down to do stuff. Sorry. Yeah, he's different. Like, he's different. Yeah, he's different. So I was just excited to get like. To, to just have you out and she just be doing cool things with you and me. stuff and we was chilling and I was coming to your house and we was doing fun stuff cooking like, food cooking food oh God, eating some good food man yeah me top chef you know and he was like yeah what's this I can braid I can do stuff and he was telling me about so many things that you can do and I was like wow so you can do my hair like I just thought it was so cool I was like yeah like when I was coming out and yeah this is going to be fun like make up for all the lost time come on I think it's good and we have a massive family so Definitely. it isn't easy hopefully i'm going to feature them on this for the last time and it's been enjoyable and you've blessed us with two more little nieces Definitely. so life is good life, life is, is good, good on the outside prefer it on the outside uh yeah uh you sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I do. of course you do you got your freedom in it and you're able to make your own decisions and choices so yeah. of course i prefer on the outside so is there any advice that you would give to any young ones out there or anyone in prison I mean you don't got access to everything now so you might even be watching the video one thing I'll say is it's funny because a lot of people say choose your friends wisely in it but in this situation I'll say yeah choose your friends wisely but not necessarily don't be choosing roadman do you get me because there's a lot of people that are on ends on man and they are actually good people do you get what I'm saying? It's the, it's the situation and circumstances that force them to do what they do. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, just because someone's a road man doesn't mean or he's dwelling in certain things doesn't mean he's going to be not be a good friend to you. Mm-hmm. What it is, is that those people that influence you to do bad, you need to keep away from them. Mm-hmm. 
yeah a good friend will always influence you to do good and try and push you in positive and right steps so if you have people around you that are pushing you to do negative and they're not doing what they're asking you to do stay away from them affirmation yeah because you want for somebody that you want for yourself so just fully stay away from them amen my brother. Me? and remember yeah it's family before anything yeah I don't care if your brother's annoying, yeah? yeah when free. you get locked up, it's your fam that's going to be coming to see you. It's your fam that's going to be making sure you've got clothes. It's your family that Even will always be there. Stew. Even before I call stew, trust oh, me. That's a hard that's one peak. for me. <laughs> I'm about to go to Southwells and get some food still. Oh, don't. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I've been dreaming about that dinner for us, man. Yeah, but all you young ones, whatever you have in your head that you want to achieve and you want to do, no one can't tell you you can't do it yeah you will find a way and when you're younger you have more opportunities do you get what i'm saying so take advantage of them when you get older your opportunities become lesser yeah, and the only thing yeah. that differentiate uh, differentiates a man's success in my eyes is his character and opportunities do you get me because you can have a person in the hood that if he get got the same opportunity as someone who lived in chelsea you, only might, god knows what yeah. he what he would become do you know what i mean so yeah, never lose hope, no matter what. And on that now. Wakunda forever. Wakanda. <laughs> Wakanda. To be honest, I'm like, Wakanda. It's, it should be Wakunda, because Wakunda sounds better. But it isn't. <laughs> but it's Wakanda. Yeah, but, yeah, let's, I'm, I'm making Wakunda. When I watched the film, yeah, mm -hmm. and then they just linked, like, they linked up and they just did this, I was just like, it was so cool. I was like, everyone needs to do that. That is... Yeah. If you see a black man on the road, you just need to do that and he needs to do it back. Like when I saw it, I just thought, wow. Do you know what? That's powerful, you know. Alright, let's start this it was thing. Very powerful. If I see you on the road and you see me, yeah. <laughs> just give me that and I know you watched the video, innit? You know, you know. You know you watched the video. Just give me that. This see me, I'll do it back, you know. You do I'll do it back. I'm that stupid that I will do it back. I don't need to know you, I'll do it back and I will I'll probably come and chat to you after and be like, yo. Don't ever think these screws are your friend. Listen to me, they are fucking okay. dogs, yeah? Who are Let me tell officers, prison no. officers. Can yeah? You, can we say this? Yeah, they're criminals just like us, yeah? Like, it's so mad, yeah, in prison, like, they're criminals just like us. Like, they'll fuck people up, yeah? They'll fake reports. Do you get me? The, the, the management at the top will have the management at the bottom's back. Like, yeah, it can get political for you in jail. Like, the screws will bust your door, come and fuck you up and keep it moving and nothing will happen to nobody. Just you go into the block locked up. Like, it is real life. You get what I'm saying? So don't ever think that jail is not like that, innit? There's certain jails you go to, if you think you're bad, they will wrap you up. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, quickly. Do you get what I'm saying? So don't ever get it twisted and think those things don't happen in prison. Do you get what I'm saying? They do. And on that note, yeah, wow, what a note to leave on. What a note to leave on. Adios, amigos. Adios, amigos. We hope you like the show. You know, keeping it Wakanda forever. No Wakanda. Wakanda. No Wakanda. Do you get me? We hope you like this version of our show. Yes. This topic. Going to bring a next topic. What next did we say week. the next one was? Next week, we will be talking about getting shipped to Ghana. Yes, getting shipped to Ghana. Please let us know in the inbox, DMs or comments, um, what kind of topics you'd like us to talk about or talk to us and give us some questions yeah. and we'll throw a list of the questions together just and let we'll us answer know. them. Just let us know how you feel about the video. We really appreciate the response. That how we can improve it, anything. Yeah, anything you'd like us to discuss, to discuss just please let us know what you like. If you don't like something, you can keep it to yourself. What? Okay. Right, thank you. As usual, like, comment, yes. and subscribe. Dumb though. Hold on. Yeah, dumb though. No, we can't shut it off like this. Shut down. Kai always a grown up gangster, man. Grown up gangster. Aye. Don't know what's going on there. You get me? You're what I'm saying to you, fam. Don't, don't. Listen, you best lock my contact. Yeah. Trust me, man. Don't watch the video, man. You're a I swear down, man. You know what I'm saying? You get me? Everything's like this, bro. Listen, man, I've got the keys in it. You get what I'm saying? Got a big four five in the backseat. I'm done.